So today is the 23rd, yep, 23rd of March. It's Breakfast with the Masters. We're getting, uh, we're grabbing material, putting it together for our September meet in live in Chicago. And uh, today we've got an interesting, I thought it was interesting at least. I'm never going to tell you what it is. Let's just work on it. How about that? Don't worry, Peter. Yes, Jonathan as well. It's, I know it's snowing in Chicago. I, my mom actually called me and said, Dear, it was so neat here last week, it's snowing. Sorry, Pete. It's early in the morning. I forgot. Well, it'll pass. Believe me, the summer will come to Chicago. Hopefully, it's still uh, fall when we get there in September. All right. So, let's get started. How many of you think you are smooth and rounded? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, oh, no problem, Timmy. Always, always remind me if you guys see the little green thing or the flashy thing you wonder if I'm recording. Please do be a favor of saying, "Are you recording?" Because I, I don't want to get halfway through a session and then go, "Ah, crap." Um, working out is still working on being smooth around getting there. I don't think it's a state of being, but something to work towards. I'm not, but sometimes I work toward it. At times, we're in progress getting closer. Okay, how many of you remember Friday's session? I know I was late in getting it posted. It's my fault, not Wendy's. Okay, so let's think back to Friday's session. And by the way, Amanda, you had a great question. Amanda was asking if she put a median line up on top um, and didn't anchor the A. And instead, I'm going to use a dirty word, curve fit it so that it grabbed the descending tops. She said it would give us give her a beautiful entry. And if, is there anything wrong with that? No, absolutely fine. I, in fact, I encourage it, Amanda. There are many ways to get in. Um, and she also found a nice long trade in this series as well. So no problem with that. Uh, and we're going to look at um, a series today. And what I want you to remember back about Friday before we get started today is this. I have, I have a thick tongue. It's like I'm very thirsty. My tongue is. I think it must be the cold tea. I'm going back to the warm tea. Anyway, think back to Friday. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I have long in my mind. I'm ultra patient. Amanda found a trade, and I'm sure she was thinking, what's wrong with you? Why didn't you take this trade, dude? Right? And it goes on and on, and I'd still, there was never a point where it would have paid me to be short. But the long trade that worked for me didn't set up, didn't set up, didn't set up, didn't set up. It seemed to just be, and I, and I said, is this patience or is this being stubborn? And, uh, of course, Al jumped in and said, hey, you know what? I would be willing to sell right here. And two bars later, a bar flipped, and my focus immediately changed. And I went from stalking along to suddenly, oh, look, this is horizontal. And if I get anything that shows me fresh sellers I should be selling no compulsion at all even though I'd spent all that time the problem a lot of people have is they get they've spent the time they feel that it needs to pay off with a trade do you understand what I mean Joey and I were talking about it on Saturday and I would be remiss if I didn't mention that Embry Riddle softball team the Lady Eagles went to the softball game with Joey and his family and my wife watched the Eagles and the Eagles uh, did a great job keeping focus and won that was fun anyway Joe and I were talking during our workout and uh, we were talking exactly about the ability in a tactical situation to be fluid and that's what made him such a wonderful battle instructor he still holds the record 
In Georgia, they have approving grounds where they do exercises. And uh, he had four tanks and four anti-tank uh, weapons. He took out 88 vehicles in 14 minutes. And purposely, the, during the test, the people on the other side, of course, changed their plan. Which, but it didn't matter to Joey because he was fluid and was able to keep his guys fluid and moving. And you have to be in the same place. Another example is my, when I came home from shopping yesterday, my daughter said, hey, dude, we're going to go upstairs and improvise right now. And so we went up to her bedroom. She handed me a trumpet. And she was playing a flugelhorn, and we improvised for about 45 minutes. She would just play a track in the background, somebody playing piano in the background. And she'd play 12 bars, and then I'd play 12 bars. And she'd play 12 bars, and then I'd play 12 bars. And the thing about it is, you got to be flexible, right? you got to listen to the person that's playing before you and where they're ending and how they're going, and then you gotta, you got to play your play what you want to go but you got to be aware of what's going around you and you know all of a sudden she's doing something completely different and it's you know you're one bar away from where it's time for you to play and it's like okay how do I fit my solo into what she's playing same thing here okay you must be smooth and rounded be flexible adapt or die right if you just sit there on the sell button and conditions change You'll find the trade, but you might not like it, right? All right, so let's look at a series today. How many of you know my opinion of gold, of uh, oil? Yeah, going lower. Right? Yeah, I have a... Well, if you don't know, the fund, Blackthorn, quote-unquote, C... Sure, basis the dollar. Um, Blackcorn C is part of a consortium that cornered the, the oil market at 105 and really caused the turn. And, and have been we whipped and dragged it for a while, but we haven't had to. It's been falling on its own sword lately. But um, we have various opinions about what the end game looks like, and that's okay as long as we don't sell each other out. But, um, so, you know, I think it's going lower. That's a long-term opinion, right? That wasn't a one-day opinion or a one-week opinion. Shoot, it's been, we're not quite at a year, but it's been a while. There's more behind this than, than supply, I think you said. It's about addressing a global issue. That's right, Timmy. This has some uh, geopolitical implications and um, some geopolitical funding behind it. How about that? Okay, so... That being said, does that mean I can't trade oil during the day? Well, the question is, can I divorce my long-term opinion from the current intraday movements on, on an intraday time frame? Well, take a long or a short, whatever the market calls for, right? Peter says, it's very difficult, but it can be done. Well, Peter, actually, I know it's difficult for most people, but, you know, there was a time when I couldn't short-term and long-term trade together, and I've talked about it a lot. I actually got a pay raise when I agreed not to long-term trade. But then at some point, I became the head of risk at Commodities Corporation, and my job was, A, to correlate everybody's long-term risk, but B, to make sure that we had the right long-term positions on, which means I had to think long-term. But I still like to short-term trade, so I went back to it and found that, you know what, I had matured enough as a trader that I, that I could trade in two time frames. And, but, and here's the key, but not mix and match them. So, I, believe me when I tell you, when I long-term trade, I don't look at the charts and I don't think about the charts until 4.30 every day. And a lot of times, it'll, I'll go weeks 
it, let's say I have a soybean position. If I'm nowhere near my stops or my, you know, my profit targets, I, I, there's nothing to do. Why look at it? That also means I don't have to think about it. So I can trade soy meal even if I have a soybean position on. I can trade oil intraday even though I have a long-term position on. And I really, okay, I'm not suggesting that you should try it, but this is an example of being smooth and rounded. Can you can you give me another example of smooth and rounded? <clears throat> what if you're an active trader? What what would show that you're smooth and rounded? Yep. Or he says he was using two time frames. Now he's using one. Yep, that's fine. Be open, sure. Happy to not trade, absolutely. Staying out of trades when they're not there. What else? I'm going to be using a 777 today, Jorge. I think. You'll know in a second. Believe in your work and act on it? Absolutely. Trade the same time frame and instrument in both shorts and... Oh, there you go. Wait, wait, wait. There, whoa, whoa, hang on, hang on. Matt Cube's got it. Trade the same time frame and instrument in both short and longs and equally profitable in both sides. Yeah. I like that. Very good. Hey, Matt, Matt, I have a question for you. Do you have any relatives here in Arizona? Do you know Mark, M-A-R-C, who was in, he was in the majors, Major League Baseball in 1996. He's uh, going to be doing, he's done some construction in our home, he's going to do some more construction. He was in the majors, at 18 years old, he got drafted and went to pitch for the Arizona Diamondbacks, 19, 1996. Magnificent guy, six foot eight, huge. Nicest guy in the world. Anyway. Well, he's not dead. You could still meet him, Matt. <laughs> I'll ask him if he knows any of his Chicago relatives. He's not that old. So he's eight, 96, so let's say to 20 years ago. He was eight. So he's, he's uh, 38. So, he's got uh, four kids. Funny thing is, this is how small the town is. My wife, my wife uh, donates time to the local middle school um, and helps kids that need uh, that need to get caught up in reading. Right when they first come to middle, you know, fifth, sixth grade, and there's uh, there's four. Oh, see, your wife, your mom and sister used to live in Prescott. See, that's, they're probably, they probably know. Ask your mom later, or, or your sister. Anyway, um, she gives her time to helping kids that are behind in reading, and there's uh, three other women that do the same thing, and one of them is Mark's wife, and my, we didn't, we had no idea that, that that's who that was. We knew her first name, so we went to breakfast on Saturday, and there was Mark, there was his wife. We were like, well, it's like old home, old home day. Everybody knew everybody. was. It's fun. But that's one of the nice things about living in a small town is you should run into people all the time. Anyway, let's go to work. So this is, yeah, 777 continuous and crude because it trades every month. You can trade continuous. You can chart continuous and trade it. Or you can go to the actual contract, whatever works for you. I just leave the continuous up, okay? So <clears throat> here's the 17th, which was last week. Okay, and you can see price makes this. This is where I started to stock. Price makes this V bottom, and you can tell I'm stocking because I'll, I go from not drawing lines to suddenly drawing lines, right? And I'm not doing anything too exciting. Here's the first pullback. I'm not going to bother because you can see immediately it does become a nice center line, right? But that's about all it becomes. Ain't gonna help me. Okay, so Ouija says the last four bars seem interesting in the spiral up. So one, two, three here, right here, Ouija. No, the problem with this at this particular moment, what I would probably do is this. This is kind of some of the type of things that we might be doing live on charts that we've never seen before. So I'd probably be 
bringing this across and I'd be looking at this is kind of a failure here we make a new high close and close on our low close on our low close on our low yeah so what I want to know is now is this a pullback like this a pullback like this a pullback like this it's the first time I've seen this type of seller so is it horizontal these look, these look like fresh sellers where'd they come from it could be profit taking could we cascade up higher absolutely but does it give us an even if even if it is so I would say this is what I would be saying internally when I see the second one right here I'd be saying is this horizontal what's the other question when this bar prints anybody okay I'll take that as well sure is this a pullback or what's the other side this is this is how I think okay and, and this is you know basically this is basically physics and and if the answer is that the slope has changed to negative yes this would be a new controlling swing unfolding right make sense okay so what's the next question I would ask myself There's a third part. Here's the first part. Here's the second part. Well, A and B. What's the third part? Not a target. Is there an opportunity I can exploit here? Thank you. Is there an opportunity I can exploit here? Sure, we could say top and all that stuff. But we don't even know if this is the top yet because we won't know unless it... Right? But is there an opportunity I can exploit? Does that make sense? And of course... The answer is if, and only if, if this becomes the top, and there is, this is the problem, and there is a shoulder, then there might be an opportunity, right? So if there's a shoulder, then let's say op opportunity. How many of you think this way? Probably not many, but you're going to need to start thinking this way because this is how it works. It's not, I'm going, it's going down, let me get short. It's going up, but let me get long. I heard the news on the radio, I got to get home and trade. That's not how it works. I mean, you can do that, but how's it working out for you? So what we want is we want to look at the very next bar, right? because we want to answer these questions these are all questions so just like Joey who's got his four tanks and four anti-tank tank vehicles we've got our tools we find ourselves in a situation and the question is is this a situation or an opportunity we can exploit all right so we look at the next bar new lows closes near its high so maybe we'll get a pullback does this now look like anything else on the way up yeah has different characteristics now it's eaten into this portion I don't know what to call it it's a it's a high with a pullback I guess it's a swing it's eaten into it but mini mountain Okay, but we haven't broken the base, right? Now, I'm not going to wait for the confirmation, but there might be an opportunity I would be willing to exploit. I don't really care if it comes down. If it comes down here, think about it this way. If it comes down here, we're almost halfway through this prior controlling swing, right? I don't want to sell down there. 
You can. Looks like your natural gas trade on Friday. That work out for you, BJ Pat? Oh, good. All right. Should have you teach the class. Just kidding. All right, let's see. No. <laughs> Needs to go back up to create a shoulder. Yeah, so is there an opportunity? So, at, see, you should be, Matt, if you don't think that way, you should be thinking that way. What do I need for this to become an opportunity I can exploit? There's nothing for me to do down here. I mean, it will give me clues. But if I get this type of movement, there might be something I can exploit. What's the next thing I, I if I'm actually asking myself that, What's the next thing I actually would need to know? <clears throat> there's, there's stuff I don't know yet, or I haven't identified yet. What would that be? Yeah, go, no, go. Exactly. What's, this, what's the volatility of this rascal? So I'm looking, look at the ATR. It's about 12. I know crude is relatively volatile, so I'm going to go 25. So that's 250 bucks. That's about normally what I risk, right? Maxim maximum. You don't have to use the whole thing. But there's my go no go, right? So if we got here, I really can't sell here because it's only uh, 78. It's only two ticks. I'm going to want at least five, five up there, maybe seven or eight, right? So I'd need a pullback, something like this. And rather than that, I'd probably be looking at, so I look at opens and closes if I'm trying to identify an area that I might be interested in. <clears throat> Come on. Something like that in that area, right? So, I'd have to be somewhere around that area, right? Does that make any sense? And that's even if I, that's if I think that this is not just part of the cascade. So you would have to feel as a trader as we talked about, Friday, you watched me go through a long journey looking for a long. Amanda found a nice place to get long. I did not. This may not be an opportunity there. That's a subtle charting technique I don't remember you showing. Okay, well, let's watch Ouija. We're going to see a lot of techniques today. Maybe you'll see some more. The question for you, Ouija, I'm going to ask you this question. If you saw this live, is this enough of an indicator for you? Has price character changed enough for you that you think slope has turned negative? That's the, that's the first question you need to ask yourself. If the answer is, I haven't seen enough. Okay, so Ouija says, you King says no. Ouija says, I'm leaning, but I can't commit. I need to see more. Okay, so neither one of you are ready to put in orders. Is Does anybody like this? No, I believe last swing still holding, says Peter. Okay. Anybody else? I, I got a lot of still would need no. Reese says, I'll give it a tumble. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thomas is with you, Reese. Okay. Okay, so I've got quite a few no's. And I've got Reese and Thomas are willing to take a punt. Let's see what we get. So, oops. A couple of us are locked and loaded. We've measured our volatility. We understand a potential area. But at the moment, ain't helping us. Now the mountain has been, mini mountain has been full, right? Matt says, now I'd take it. Okay. So if you got to, Ouija now, if you got to pull back up here, would you now sell it? Ouija says, yes. Are you king? So, we've identified, Peter says, no, not a real low. Well, Peter, does it have to break this low before you'd get be willing to get short?
Peter says, no, just a little more convincing. Now, for those of you that knew, and you, if you go to the market map session in the midday, we are not trading like market maps sessions. Those are the foundation materials, but we're taking these to, it's like the difference between Newtonian physics and quantum physics, although I, I piss on quantum physics. I don't like quantum physics, but think of something else for me, guys, because that's all I could think of this morning. But, um, you know, we're taking this to the next level, okay? I'm showing you aggressive trade. This is how I aggressively trade. Kepler and Newton. Okay. I like that. Yeah, Matt, you can write that down. I piss on quantum physics. Yes. And I'm known for that in the physics world. Big leagues and the majors, okay? That's right now for me, like trading long-term and short-term, trying to work out that. Well, I, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. All right, so let's watch. So, <clears throat> stops at the mountain base, closes on its high. Maybe we'll get a pullback. Uh, right back at you. And, of course, takes out the mountain base. Peter, now you ready to get short? Peter says, yummy. Okay. All right. So I think everybody's convinced at this point that price, let's just, let me, let me just draw it. Here's the slope. Here's the slope slowing. Here's the slope going flat. Of course, this is on the bottom over here. Here's, okay. You can see the tangents. Same thing that happens up here. We've now agreed that the tangent is now negative right speakable and unspeakable in quantum mechanics book by John Belton okay so we piddle around a little bit let me get rid of that line Clean the screen there we go and now we've got a nice little pullback here. And, of course, we're salivating in this area. Al says, here comes the shoulder. Or not. I see this bar. It opens near its high, closes on its low. Put in a line of maximum excursion. Do you want to trade here? Anybody? Let's put the... At the moment... Is there an opportunity? There's no opportunity, right? Hi, Aaron. How you doing? Okay, so by the way, more opportunity. Don't you agree? We need to take out that swing before trading. No, I don't agree. That's what I'm trying to teach you, Peter. This is called trading to the left over here. I don't want you worrying about you're you're looking for this stuff to happen. I'm telling you so often we can trade up here. You're just going to have to open your mind to it and practice so that your eyes see it. Only take these trades if you see them, if you can see them and they're repeatable and they work for you. But I'm always going to be trying to push your trades to the left. That's what that means. Operation Boom Boom. Okay, I'll take that. I don't expect you to trade on this bar ever. Okay? And that this particular opportunity never matured. So it was a opportunity loss, but that's okay. And you can see new lows. Closes on a slow. Look at it unfold. All right? So at this point, I'm done. Because if it pulled back now all the way back up to here, because uh, we're past 50%, I don't, I'm not interested. Okay? So any interest I have in being short, I'm not going to be stubborn. At this point, I could have made money being short. There just wasn't an opportunity. So because it's come so far, I'm not interested in going short anymore. Do you understand that? I'm in the, I'm in the reset mode. All right, so I clear my mind. Wait for the next spiral mode. Sure. Maybe I go get some tea. Check my mail. Watch a few bars. Make sure that my focus is diamond, clear. Not still focusing on a short. 
Okay, I don't care that it broke this low. What I care about is the opportunity if it comes back up here. It's old. This is old news. Yes, you should know the size of your swings, average swings in this. And you can't trade unless you can clean your mind, right? All right. Oh, that's a mistake. My mistake. Hang on. I hate when that happens. Okay. So we come down. We leave a low. Close on our high. Everybody see it? Have no idea if it's significant. It's nothing. Could have put one here. Well, actually, it's only the second one I could have done. It's only the second shelf low. Take a look. So, mark it out. See where it goes. When we close on our high, we've got two closes on our high. I'm going to mark this as a potential important low. Yeah, and I, I know we got this sitting over here. Let's make that as much. Okay, so I know we have this over here. So if this ends up with any follow through at all, what can what can I say about this? High or low, right? And would that make it meaningful? So is this just part of a cascade up like this? That's what we that's what we need to find out, right? Is that is that this or is this different? You see how in close and personal allows me to be looking and investigating subtle differences even in one bar to the next bar. Let me just show you what a lot of you are still looking at. Uh, is, this, is this still going down or is this going up? How many of you are looking at Come on, be honest. How many of you here and how many of you are here? Just being honest with you guys, I still get the charts, okay? Somewhere in between. Okay, well, the closer... Obviously, you're seeing things, Amanda, because you found some nice trades from Friday. Okay. Took you a year to move out, says, all right, good. I'm looking to the left, but my calls are not reliable. Okay, but the thing about it is, Gina, adding more data is not going to help you, and just being focused on that left is not going to make you more reliable. Okay? What's going to make you more reliable is sticking with this amount of data and practicing. Okay. Back and forth, John, it's a loser. You're not going to develop a lie until you pick a certain amount of bars and just stick with it. All right, You're going to have to make the commitment and just stick with it. If it runs up a bit, which would make it look different, then gets up in that area, confuses the shorter long. All right, well, let's see how it unfolds, Matt, and see if I, if you have questions as each bar, as each bar unfolds, if you have a question, just ask, or if you have a comment, if you say, hey, this does this for me, let me know, because that's what we're trying to do today, okay? We want to be, we want to stay smooth and rounded, flexible, and see if we can find opportunities that we can exploit. All right, so I don't know if it matters to you, it's broke the line of maximum excursion and closes on its high. But, okay, now, and you King says that's an engulfing bar, okay, so which means that its low is lower than the prior bar and its high is higher than the prior bar. Why would you not be interested in a long right now to the top around 3 to 1? Okay, Bob, so Bob says... Bob, let me turn it into a statement. Bob says, I'm interested in a long right now. I think I could get three to one to the top. How about that, Bob? Yes? Are you there, Bob? Are you there? Are you ready? Ah, Bob says, no real stop. 
but with, if there was an opportunity, I would exploit it. I'm changing your words a little bit, but is that okay? No real setup or stop, sorry. But yeah, if there's an opportunity at this point, I would explo exploit it. Okay, so let's see if it gets to the point where you're interested, okay? So Bob's sniffing it already. Now, how many people look at this and say it's still part of a cascade up? And, or cascade down. This is just part of the swing, as this is part of the swing. Okay, I got at least one. Al says it is. Anybody else? Looks that way to me. I need at least one more bar. Yes, I have no reason to believe that it's not. I think it's part of the up move, not down. Okay. Cool. All right. So, let, so I'm still not sure. So we haven't convinced every everybody. We got at least Bob though that's saying. Thomas says maybe this is a pullback in the down move. Okay, so we got at least Bob, though, that's saying with that bar, if I get an opportunity, I'd exploit it for a move back to the upside. Okay, so let's see if we can convince everybody else. So we make another high, and it does close on its low. Before we get too excited, if you want to know, we'll just measure the, the size of the swing. Just for the record book. Size of the swing is about the same. Maybe contracting a little bit, but not much. I note that it is slowing on the bottom. Do I have to draw that? I guess I will. So here's how fast we were going. And now, here's how fast we're going. You know, Al, I always try and hurry up because I know you have to leave for meetings. But there's always 500 different things once I start to draw that I want to do. Now can you see it slowing on the bottom side? See it decelerating? So I've got one thing going on which is this seems just like it could just seem like a pullback. It has broken. We really can't draw any other down sloping line of maximum exertion. It's broken that. The downside is decelerating. So we're watching this as a potential bottom. Okay, as we pull back, I would say that the majority of you are now saying, see, I told you, it looks like that was a pullback in the down move. Wouldn't you agree? Some of you are being cagey. If this stops, that, ah, so Bob says, hey, yeah, that's fine, but if this movement stops, it's going to build a stop for me. So Bob, Bob is not giving up yet. Top is accelerating, somebody else says. Is it? Is it accelerating? I don't think the top is accelerating. Top is decelerating, isn't it? Okay, so some of you still feel it could be a pendulum pullback and the swing down. Bob is saying, you know what, uh, I think there might be an opportunity for me to snag along. I just need to be able to buy a stop. So let me put your go go over here. I know you're not, you're not ready yet, but just so we can play around, okay? All right, so let's see what we get. Getting to the mountain low. That doesn't work yet for Bob. Hmm. I like this little cluster. This is one of those things. We've talked about fulcrums. Some of you haven't been here when we have. Take a look. Al says I'd now draw in my median line. Well, I'm suspicious. I mean, it's got my interest. We didn't fill the mountain, but that's not the end of the world. But I always like it when we get, look at the close, open, close, open. I always wonder if this is the fulcrum that's telling us the mass is shifting, but this isn't enough. I'm, I'm going to need at least one more bar to tell me. Um, in baseball, you can see a good hitter. You can see his hips go through, and you can see their weight shift before their bat moves. 
in golf, you can see people go, they stop at the top, and then their hips shift, and then the hand swings comes down. Um, I don't have a, a sports, a non-sports analogy, I'm sorry. Bob says, I'm afraid the next bar will take off, and I won't get my long entry. Okay. In candies, in candles, I'm sorry, Steve would call that three muskrats in the river. <laughs> okay. Three muskrat, okay. I know, I, 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 he says he's kidding, I know. I like that, though, but... Uh, I can make lots of pictures out of that. I'm not really sure what the hell to call it. But. All right, so, ooh, wait. All right, so, Bob, here's what I see. Everybody pay attention. See if you think I'm out of my mind. Price now breaks. We break a high. See it? So I'm at least willing to say that we're horizontal or in a range right this does not look like this anymore we're broadening out and we've now broken a high everybody see that Bob says just put you know what just shoot me just put my go no go in now but I don't I suspect it won't fill me okay where are you willing to buy are you willing to buy here at the mass shift what I would register as the mass shift? Or is that too aggressive or not aggressive enough for you, Bob? You don't really want to buy up here, do you? 4310. Really? Okay. Bob says he's going to be all the way up here. All right. All right. So Bob has sniffed an opportunity. I'm going to just move this to the side. There's Bob's order. You can see he's got um, he's in a little bit more than half of his stop up above to make sure that he does get filled if it pulls back. But he's still got plenty down below, right? He's got almost the AT down, ATR down below. He's got about 10, 10 ticks down below. Everybody see this? Double tops and close on the low and close on our low. At that point, I consider this to be a major high. Does that make sense? Your orders are in, Bob. You're filled, Bob. Now, Bob's traded pretty far to the left. Bless you, son. For those of you that are not that aggressive, let's see what we can. Let's see if I can turn you around as well. Ready? Closing on the low. Closing on the high. Closing on the low. Where's Bob? Stop underneath this low. Yes, underneath forty-two ninety-five. About ten ticks or eleven ticks. We're coming down to test the low. Okay. When I see this, now remember, I've already decided personally that price has gone horizontal. I look, you'll see me do this all the time. Take a look up here. Take a look here. I'm looking at closes, opens, closes, where price is clustering, and right where this is where I got interested right here see that and as price unfolds and we come back down that's the area I'm gonna be interested in you see it Bob I got no problem with the trading here don't worry, okay? But is it's just like last Friday's entry you entered horizontally at the cluster of highs and lows. Yes, and we're just, yep. I, I want you to see these. 
Hate to say it, but it looks like a doji. Okay, that's fine. I don't know what a... I've never been inside a doji. I know you're talking about a bar. I don't do... I really... I, I know Steve very well, but I don't really do candlesticks. <clears throat> In fact, I'm sending Lewis one of uh, Steve's first... the first book that Steve wrote when he got back from Japan, which started the whole candlestick. Sushi, yeah. All right, so when I count, when you when it counted to you, or when I'm not sure what you mean, Peter, but yeah, he's a nice guy. All right, so now we make a slightly new low. You freaking out, Bob? Not yet. Okay, so how many of you are convinced that this market has turned? And how many is anybody thinking that this uh, that was just a pullback and now we're heading lower? What do you think? Peter says I'm scared for Bob. Don't worry, Bob's a, Bob is a big boy. It doesn't look like a pendulum now. I think lower says John. Not looking for a trade yet says Amanda. Al says I have to need another bar. Only one stop. Looks lower, but no entry for a short here. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be trading for a short here, Gina. I'm a bit split, but I'm still interested. I'm biased to the long side. Okay. So we're testing the low. And then we get a headstander. And we've gone far enough that, for me, I don't know what that means, Bob. Was that thank you, Jesus? You're not stopped out. It's okay. We've gone far enough for me that... Hello? Oh, I think, I think my wife's letting the dog run around the house. We've gone far enough for me that if we pull back to the upside, we're fine. But I don't want to see it... Uh, and, of course, Bob doesn't want to see it go any lower, okay? So, as far as I'm concerned, this low is make or break. Does that make sense? This low will tell me, because, again, here's the, let me go through the questions again. And again, I'm, I'm going slower than I wanted to, but I am. Here we go. Okay, we're heading down. We're heading down more gently. Let me reject this freaking call. Go away. Then, I know we're at least horizontal. Okay? Anybody want to argue that we at least went horizontal? Now, we may then go from horizontal. Here's the question. From horizontal, did we then go negative? Or is that the last photon? And from horizontal, we're actually doing this. Follow me? The bottom has definitely widened out. The question is now, now that it's widened out, is this a new leg down or is this a leg up? And I'm going to be looking at the tangents. And as far as I'm concerned, if it goes any further than this, we're probably on a new leg lower. Does that make sense? I'm, you, Bob, you're all good. I'm, I'm with you. Okay, no, don't don't get concerned. I'm with you. You're over to the left. You're aggressive. I like it. Ah, so was that headstander a last photon? That's enough for me to do this. That's enough for me to at least draw this in. Now, if you want to just trade on medians, uh, for example, median lines, for example, the ML Queen, Dawn, no median line, she don't trade. Okay, well, I think this is a, this is an acceptable median line. This, 
gives me what I consider to be the probable path of price. Why? Because if this low gets taken out, we should be in a new leg on the downside. Is it wrong for me to think that a new low is bad? Um, I don't know. Is that a religious principle, Peter? We, okay, so, and I'm just kidding with you, but as you're here longer and longer, you're going to see what we call this last photon. A lot of times you think things go horizontal, it gets one last little spurt. Okay, I'm, I'm not exactly sure why, but you can, you can definitely say, okay, I think this thing's gone horizontal. I'll give it this last little bit, but that's got to be it. I'll draw the line here. And if you're trading far to the left like Bob is, and you use your, your volatility measurement correctly, you should be able to cover the possibility that this last spurt down, this last photon, you've already gone horizontal, but sometimes it just leaks or something, will cover that. Which is one reason why Bob was willing to put his order where he did, because that still left him almost half his ATR to cover for this opportunity. Peter says, I'm not there yet, I agree with horizontal. Okay, so you're going to probably be taking a secondary entry. There's nothing wrong with that, Peter. So let's see what happens. Let's see what I'm willing to do, too. Me likey. So when I see this bar come up and tap the median line, see, at this bar, I've already got my order. And when this bar closes, I put my order in on the blue line. See that? So Bob's out of the gates before me. When price closes up here, I put my order here. That's nice, but I don't get filled. Crap, right? But it does close on its low, so I have hopes. And Bob's feeling a whole lot better. Okay, I'm filled. Great. And there's not very much difference. There's only five, five ticks difference, maybe six between Bob and I, right? But now I have confidence in this median line. You could have also said, you know what, I'll buy the lower parallel, or I ain't playing. And you would have got filled at the lower parallel. See it? Now, if you're willing to be patient... Would you describe this as a fist fight? Um, this looks, this to me looks like exactly like I've drawn it. Down sloping, less down sloping, horizontal. One group of sellers, and they're immediately, it's immediately taken by buyers. The key is this bar right here, John. If this bar, if the goes any lower then we got a fist fight on our hands but what happens if this bar is the low on this secondary move down John I can I can end the fist fight right here but how would I end it not a strong reaction what what would I need I need to see buyers, and yeah, I well, John Lee's got it. I need to see buyers, okay? And if I get buyers here, I will have, look at the chart, what will have happened? Higher low, thank you, John. If I have a higher low, there's no fist fight, is there? So it really is dependent bar by bar. So let me just say that it is. It really is dependent bar by bar. So rather than looking, for example, I'm going to pick on Peter. Rather than looking at this high and saying, you know what, if it breaks this high, I'll get convinced. But it needs to take something out. And I know you guys learned that in the market map sessions. And that is, you know, for the masses and for people just walking in the door, confirmation that we've turned and that the flow is up makes it easier for you to read a chart. But it literally can be 
a bar that tells you all you need to know. Follow me? No, you don't. I don't care about this high anymore. I don't even care about this high anymore. Okay, so Peter, listen to me. I don't care about this high anymore, and I don't care about this high anymore. I don't even care about this high anymore. What I care about, Peter, watch, is whether or not this bar becomes the next low, because then it will be a higher low, which tells me that the slope has turned up. Do I need to repeat it, Pete? Anybody else? That's why we're looking to the right, not looking over here to the left. I don't care about that stuff. I know other traders do. That's why I'm so much quicker. But many times before, we've seen that fail. Well, Peter, if listen, if this low gets taken out, Peter, if this low gets taken out, kaboom, right? I don't have a higher low. Amanda says, once it leaves the area, you will care about previous highs. Well, I might say, where's my first problem, right? But right now, I'm literally on this struggle right here. Peter, you with me? If we take this low out, it will have failed. Bob will get stopped out. I'm already long, and I'm probably going to get stopped out. But... It's down to this. Is this a high probability trade? Looks Peter looks 50-50. It's not 50-50. Here's why, John. We've already gone horizontal. See it? We know it's gone horizontal. Okay? Now, the farther we go to the right and don't break the lows the higher the probability we're heading up. The closer you can trade to the left, A, the more likely you're to get in, and B, generally, the better the price, so the better the risk-reward you're able to snag, right? So if you actually trade at the moment where the mass shifts, this is where I thought about it. In actuality, I think it's going to come down to this bar right here. This is the nexus for me right here in this trade, even though I'm already long. When that bar prints, I immediately say, okay, that looks like it might be a higher low. And if that's the case, should be good, right? Remember, it's only one stop. Since we do have swings in the horizontal, is there a definition for horizontal? You should be able to see it, Peter. There, I know you want a black and white. There is no black and white. Take a look at it. Does this look like a down move or does this look like a horizontal range? Let me give you a better definition. Doesn't it look like a mess, Peter? We went from a clear delineated down move to a mess, right? Um, I would have traded their classic pivot trade, says Matt. Aaron says, doesn't matter to the trade entry, but I wonder if the pattern will develop. Will it go higher and then make a new low similar to AC points repeating? Well, if it does, Aaron, it just becomes a stop. I lost a stop, that's all. John Lee says, horizontal equals potential tangent turn. That's exactly right. Um, i got to catch up to you, Amanda. Hang on. We now have price action on both sides of the horizontal line. Well, that is true. But now we're making higher lows. Um, or a scare shakeout. Next bar breaks lower median line but closes on its high could happen. Okay. So Amanda's saying we could come down here and take out this low but close up here. Always certainly a possibility. As long as I don't get stopped out, I don't really care. David says... What has done it for me, Tim, is pure repetition and paying attention as it happens. Well, that's what we're going to try and do today, and I'm, I'm going to try and move a little bit faster. But once you see it go flat, a new higher low and higher two, etc. That's right. 
So watch as we go through a few of these. We're going to go through three today. Stay as long as you can, okay? So I'm in, Bob's in. Some of you have decided you're with us. There are still some people that say, I need to see more, okay? All right. A new high and closing on the high. Gene is long. Okay, now we're moving higher. If you wanted a secondary trade, Peter, you would hope for this right here, which is 2D, horizontal into sloped. That would be the secondary trade. Now we get to the median line. Here's the problem with looking for that secondary touch. You can see it's still at the same price, right? Can you all see that? I'm willing to trade here. This would be the ultimate, obviously. But sometimes when you wait for that secondary trade, the train just doesn't come back. Now we got something to consider here. Bob's in, I'm in, okay? Bob said to me, and I probably didn't repeat the whole thing, you know what, I'll just put an order in because I'll bet I got three to one. So let's take a look at Bob's interest. First problem is right there. So Bob's risking 250 to make 695, 700 bucks. A little bit skinny, but not by much. Pretty good eyes. And remember, the magic magic number is not three; it's two point seven. So I'm I'm with, I'm good with that, Bob. And you can see I get in. And again, I I applaud your entry, Bob. Don't, don't I'm not uh, I'm not damning at all. I like your entry. Okay, I'm gonna risk two fifty. And 770 because I've got a slightly lower entry, okay? But I'll take I would take either one of those trades, okay? Now if you're if you did this one, look at this one. If you waited for the median line and you would have got filled, you're risking 250 and you would have made 850. It's even better. So it depends, kind of depends on your trade location. Where are you most likely to get filled? Well, where Bob put in his order, right? So the further left, the more likely, the more chances, the more likely you are to be full, filled. Okay? If you can feel the weight shift, whether it's here or here, you'll have to decide for yourself. That's when your orders want to go in. Now, some of you are still not convinced. Now, let's see. We get up to the median line again. And now we close above the median line and take out this high. Pete's ready to trade now. Am I correct, Pete? Yeah, I'm not correct. You don't want to get long? You wouldn't get long down here? Yes, you would. Okay. So, uh, sorry. You can see it go nearly ver vertical. Now, remember the exercises that I gave you, the homework from, I don't know, two, three sessions ago? Get long, find the parabolic move. See it? Get long, find the parabolic move. The parabolic move takes you right to the median line. Okay? So if you've done blue to blue, you'd be at about 2.7. Okay? Amanda says she'd have a stop. Where would you go? Break even? Yeah. Amanda's go to break even at this point. Okay. We're going to pull back to, from the upper parallel to the median line. Now you can go here, Amanda. At that point. Now, this looks, take a look, this looks pretty horizontal, doesn't it? All right, so the question is, as it goes horizontal, you need to bring your stop underneath here 
it should be fueling for the next run, but if it is a failure, it is a balance area, and you expect the reaction to come. But if it's not, if you get a failure, you don't want to get stopped on a break even. You want to take some of this money home, right? So let's go 15. Does that make sense to everybody? Now you're not going to take that much. If you're taking the median line trade, 42.94, 19. So you're taking uh, 24, 25 cents. But that's 250 bucks. Better than a poke in the eye, isn't it? Just in case it fails. Okay, at this point, you're pretty sure that we've gone from horizontal, from down to horizontal. Come on, work with me. And again, uh, beginning to ascend again. Does that make sense? But we never know. Actually, in this case, we weren't going down. We've got horizontal, we're beginning, beginning to ascend again, okay? So we see horizontal portions even in a run-up. Not all the time. But remember, this was the exercise I gave you. Find the opportunity, look for the parabolic run. Even that was worth 2.7. That's the easy part. You can see us come back to the media line and retest it. We're at the upper parallel again. Actually, we're out right here. I am, I don't know about Bob, which is just prior high. I just went, what's the first problem? Prior high, take me out at the first high. So for me, <clears throat> this is just a, you know, three to one, no brainer. Out, thank you. Bob says out, thank you, okay? Well, that Peter, I didn't look left when I started the trade. Amanda talked about this. When I started the trade, this is how I put my plan together. Okay, I'm going to get long here. And if I double the range here, for example, if I just double the range, that's not enough for me. I need at least here for me to get three to one so I used I didn't squeeze in Peter I'm just using this for a target see it I don't know I just erased but it isn't, probably isn't what I wanted to erase that's okay question Peter get that don't get that what we do no we ended up not doubling a range because I looked at the double from this to here, the horizontal section, doubling wasn't is not enough money. So instead, I just went to the prior top, which is my first problem anyway, and said, okay, you know what, when we get for the first problem, just give me my money. So 43.77, just give me my money, okay? Everybody with me? It's exactly what Amanda said. Once I, I'm looking to the right, once I find the entry that works for me, then I'm gonna say, okay, where's the first problem? If I thought this was a problem, I wouldn't play. Where's the first problem? It's a uh, prior high. Okay. I could go to the median line and just be underneath it, but the median line is, doesn't give me enough. Unless I'm in down here. All right. So let's not get let's not get too caught up. I just want to take some swings apart for you guys. So we come up. I'm going to take prior highs. There it is. I'm out. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Well, let's follow and see what price does. Bob and I are out. Get back up to the median line again. Back up. Now we're trying to get above the median line. All I did was connect this high to this high. Project it forward. Right? Could you have stayed in longer? Sure. You could have moved your stop up. Connected this low to this low. I'm just measuring speed. Once we get above the median line, and we're staying above the median line, 
and it's, sure it's just running so there's an extra 40 cents on the table here right okay now take a look does this look familiar I know we're all excited because it's running higher and higher and higher but does this look familiar doesn't this look like horizontal last photon looks like Bob's entry yeah now we've taken out a low the short maybe he's coming into focus Does that work for you Bob Ouija says the gray line is that area to sell there you go Bob says no this time I need a little more so Bob Bob's not comfortable with this one I think this gray area for me is the area I want to pay attention to. All right, so let's see what we get. I just want to go through a couple swings and show you a couple. I want to show you two-sided trading. Amanda says, I'm with you on the gray area. Okay, so Amanda and I are going to trade now. So you can see we've come down quite a bit, and the median line's still holding. And I sure as... Okay, take care, Al. You have a good... I'll see you Friday right now. I thought it was Friday already. Oh, my God. <coughs> That's how long the morning has been. Um, we're coming down to the lower parallel. My man and I need a rally, or it's not going to give us a trade, right? Well, sure as heck, I'm not going to trade down here. Is there anybody that thinks that this is a pullback in a down in the uptrend? Be honest. Could be, says Gina. Okay, I got Aaron says I can't discount it. Logical pivot area, 2D mountain low with the blue lower parallel may give a pullback to sell, says Ouija. Okay, could be, but I would not trade along here, says John. Okay, all right. Price has changed, larger move. Okay, okay, so we've got a double bottom closes on its high. We basically have gone to the lower parallel, and we've seen that a lot. Price will slide from the upper to the lower. Logical place for price to turn, and then you get your pendulum pullback. Amanda and I are counting on a pendulum pullback. Bob says now he's looking for a retrace for short tight. Well, let's see if you are tuning into what we're doing. So this is here is our first pullback right here. See it? Here's our first low. Here's the first pullback from the run up right here can we have a go no hanging now um, I'm sure one's about to pop up trust me hunting for C um, I don't even know if I put in a median line Gina so Tim would you put in a, la a line of max extrusion now from the previous low to the current low it's not going to tell me anything the, the lower parallel is working Amanda here's why I wouldn't bother the lower parallel is working and the lower parallel has mathematics attached to it right and in terms of attaching it to above remember it's going to be it's from the low it's going to be steeper than the lower parallel that means we'd have to get even higher Amanda we'd have to go all the way up here to get short so the upper the upper parallel is already working for us as is the median line the lower parallel is working for us. So, yeah, possible switchback. Blue median line, brown center line, and a gray line. How about this area right in here? The, the mathematics of a median line, if it's working, are always important. They trump anything. I'm not telling you you have to use a median line for everything because there are times when I trade without them. Absolutely trade without them. Okay? But partly it's because I can see them in my sleep, and partly you can just see the market structure and know. That's why I want you guys to do the work on, if you haven't done the work, find the area that might be an opportunity. Find the impulse move that turns out to be parabolic from it. That's For a lot of you, that's going to be your bread and butter trade. If you haven't, and you might want to do another 20 if you haven't. 
That's the easiest run to catch. Meaning, if you can catch it, that's the easiest money to put in your pocket. That first parabolic move. Okay? All right, so let's look. Finally, we break. I would call this. Here we get another. Can you all see this? Right here. That was our issue right here. Here's our line of balance. Now we've popped above it. I don't want to trade down here. John Lee says, I can. I think we'd still see another fo last photon as the last high did not decelerate. Okay, so do you, John Lee, do you expect a new high before we turn? So you should all be thinking, what what is likely here? What do I envision? I'm just curious what you're thinking, John. May see a poke higher, says John. Okay. All right. So let's see what we do see. We go past the gray and close on our high. Look at this. On our high, on our high, on our high. We zoom the median line. See it? Okay, there's our line of maximum excursion. Here's the first pendulum. I'm gonna, which remember we were talking about what to name this? I'm going to call this the first pendulum. Close on our low. Amanda says, here it is. So we're talking about initial, not initial thrust. I'm going to call it the first pendulum. Order in at the gray. Okay, let's see what I do. Son of a gun. So I make sure that I'm five ticks above C. What would be C if I was going to draw? You could draw the median line A, B, C. I make sure I'm above here. And I'm going to use the gray or even maybe even a touch lower. I'm looking at this high, this close, this open, this close, this open. Right in here to me is the area. You could be at the gray. A couple, couple pips different. Okay, everybody get it? So all the way over here, as I see this, I'm thinking we may be going horizontal, and here it is right here. And if that's the case, I want to pay attention around this gray area right here. Let me make this a different color. We pull down, we go blue to blue. We've got a line of balance here. When we poke through the line of balance, now our question is, are we going to make a new high or leave what? Let's do this. A lower high or the first pendulum, right? Everybody with me? Smooth and rounded. Adapt or die. Keep an open mind. If you miss one, don't get married to it. You can always catch the next one, right? If you didn't catch the move up, keep an open mind. There may be another opportunity. If you don't like this opportunity, don't take it. That's fine. So let's see. Now we've got acceleration. I'm filled. And now we've got acceleration. If you didn't get in on one of these two bars, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. There you go, Pete. If you didn't get in on one of these two bars, if you waited for the confirmation of breaking the balance line, you're dead. Do you see what confirmation can cost you? It does give you information, but like anything else, it costs. There's no free lunch, says Milton Friedman, and he's right. <coughs> Excuse me. So, we're back at the lower parallel. And Amanda, what we want to know is, so far, it's the median line has held, right? We're short. We've got our stop in. We want the lower parallel to break.
one bar. So Amanda and I are in. We're happy. And what I care about is the vision that we went horizontal. This end, this ended up being the last fo photon. Horizontal, last photon. How do you tell? Starts to take out swings. The question is, are you going to get an opportunity to sell? How are you going to get an opportunity? Runs to the lower parallel, which is where price should run out of directional energy. Price breaks back up. We barely get above the median line. It's right at this multi-pivot line right here. And when we get a head stander, put my order in, get filled. I had two bars to get filled or you're gone. Amanda says, now i got to be at break even. Okay, I'm with you. If this ends up not being the top and the shoulder, I don't want to be in this trade anymore. Does that make sense? Okay, so Peter says, I'm pretty sure I would have taken along there on the break lower. I've got work to do. Well, okay. All of us have work to do. All of us. Practice, practice, practice. And Peter, I'm... I'm forcing you to trade in a fashion that you've never traded before, believe me. So it's uncomfortable. And it's not particularly um, native. But it works like a charm if you can just find the rhythm, which is why we're going to look at multiples today we're going to look at at least i think there's three today okay we'll just keep working it over okay so we're short here can you see the parabolic move you see it unfolding look at it that's what you want to catch because this parabolic move has pushed your stop out of the way even your break even all right the next pullback if it comes is likely at best to be here you're safe if you sell here which so many people do Peter how many buddies do you have that would sell this new low yeah if you sell here and you get any pullback at all you get stopped out right you just your guppy food for the whales all right so Let's see what happens. We go a little bit horizontal. Where's our target? All right, well, it's a great question. I don't like to pull in, but I will pull in for you. So let's just do double the range. Um, to do that, I have to do this. All right, double, just double the range. So if we just do double the range, Amanda, that works. We're risking 250 to make 850. All right? So we can do it as simple as that if we want. And the low is so far to the left, I wouldn't even be looking at it. Uh, I, I wouldn't. I, you're, I know you're going to ask where's the last major low. I wouldn't even bother to look. I'd either just do something like double the range, or I'd be running stops above each swing, right? One or the other. Because the, the low, if it's off the if it's off the screen, I don't care. I know that sounds. I, I use this word lightly. I, I know most people are politically correct. I'm not. I know this sounds retarded. If it's off the screen, I'm not going to squeeze in. Maybe it sounds stubborn. I don't want to be in the habit of squeezing in and looking. I don't really care. Okay? If it's not on the screen, I don't use it. So Peter says, what made you reverse? No new high? All right, let's look. Peter, look at the horizontal section right here. Then we get a run up. And then we start to take out the lows. When we start to take out the lows, I don't want to be a buyer. I want to be a seller. 
Break out of the coil and come back, says you, King. See if you can see that, Peter. Break out of this coil, boom, and come back. Now, it doesn't always come back, but... Does that make sense, Peter? Okay, well then, we gotta, we're going to do another one. Don't worry. Anybody else have questions before we move on? See how much fun we're going to have in September? I'm just going to beat this stuff to death. But we're going to do some cool, some new things as well. So we leave a lower high. And unfortunately, if you realize that it's a lower high at this point right here, it's too late. That's the problem. That's why I'm trying to force you to the left. Because a lot of people might get it right here. Or here. Or even better, here. But you've got no trade now. See it? Looks to me like the median line is doing its job until it fails. That is true. So we are actually anticipating the failure, Peter. I will give that to you. But I'm always, and that's why I say to you, I'm always going to be trying to force you to the left. Because remember, price should run out of directional energy to the downside here. Okay? So we're going, let's, let's do it. As we move down here, we're going 80%. Or, if you want to think about it this way, Peter, we're going 80 miles per hour. Okay? With this bar right here. Make sense? You with me? Hang on, hold the questions. Peter, make sense? Okay, I'm going to walk you through it. As we come through the median line and head toward the lower peril, do you see that we're going 80% or 80 miles per hour, Peter? Okay. As we get to the lower parallel, we're now not going 80. We're going 43. We're slowing down. That's the probability, right? Do you see that? Okay. Here... 43% of the time, we punch through. 43% of the time, we reverse. So at this point, it's 50-50, right? So to speak. You with me? Okay. So as we head higher here, we're back to 80%. We know where it's going. Right? With me? Okay, as we come up here, we're at 43%. Okay, let me widen way out for you. And let me get rid of this again. Oh, that's not it. Oh, it is it. Okay, take a look. We come up, and we get up to the median line right here, and we're going right here. We're going 43%. You see that on this bar right here, Peter? See it? Okay, we do punch through on one bar, so if you're not ready to trade, that's fine. But look at the next bar. Do you see this? Okay, we're right back down to 43%. I'm not even going to describe it, Gina. I know it's, uh, Gina's telling you that it's an outside bar with a low close. And it has great separation. That Well, that should be enough for you. But the big key, Peter, is we went through and we came, we zoomed it, and we came right back through and zoomed it. And now we should be, if you want the perfect place as a median line trader to sell, it should be the moment this crosses, you should have an order in at the median line. See it? This is a sign of weakness. So if you want to use the median line and mathematics, we've slowed down. And this whole area now is 50-50. Is but remember, we're leaving a lower high, which adds to the likelihood that this 43% to the upside, 43 to the down, is going to come with this type of movement. 
Does that help? All right. And so if you waited for this confirmation, of course, you never would have seen the trade. I know it's nice to know this, but unfortunately, there's going to come a time when you're going to have to put your money on the table before the move happens because we want to be in up here. This is where Amanda and I want to get in. And there's a reason we want to be in up here because when everybody gets it right here, our stop is now out of reach. Everybody gets it. A lot of lights going on. Good. Good, Pete. This will be a great session for you. Probably for a lot of people. So we pause at the prior low. Jeff says, I get it. Good. And we start to accelerate. All right. So Amanda asked for double the range. I'm going to give it to her. Leave a low. Protect your profits. Did the two bars that close consecutively on the high from the blue lower parallel make you wait before selling? Um, did the two bars that close consecutively on the high from the blue lower parallel right here? Ouija? To the right. Two bars are close consecutive on the high. Right here and then here. Here and then here. I want to know that this is a lower high. How do I know? By this close right here. So maybe I didn't explain it right the first time. Look at it. Close on its high. Close on its high close on its high headstander now I know that this is a lower high likely a lower high so and I'm underneath the lower parallel now I'm willing to put my order in think about it. zoom zoom put my order in at a retest that help that answer it Ouija good question did the nature of that pullback make you consider waiting before selling I don't know yet that this is going to be a lower high until this bar comes along good question now that's in close and personal on each bar we so on the high on the high on the high this bar fails and closes on its low underneath the lower parallel now i'll put the order in is that where you, is that what you're getting to should you wait for that failure bar I don't have any other over here I don't have any evidence yet that this is a high so I am going to wait the median lines way it was working right and the median lines up sloping so in this particular case I'm gonna wait I just I, I'll have to tell you the truth John I suspected after this failure when we headed lower that I was gonna be in trading in this area but I didn't I could and if I want to be honest, if I want to trade really far to the left, I could put my order in right now. When we take out these low, put my I could put this order in right now, and of course it worked out the same, right? I would have been filled right here, but it would have been the same same price. We just says I see that. Thank you. I think the ultimate trading to the left order should be just to put the sell limit order in at the gray. Yeah, at this point when we break this low right here, Ouija, I could just do this. But I want to get you. I want to give you different looks at this, and you can see it's the same price, right? But Ouija, great. I'm glad you asked this question. Look, close on the high, close on the high, close on the high, reverse. Okay, I get it. Put my order in. So, John, when would you have put your orders in? Right here. Okay, so John. You traded as aggressively as Bob did on the long, and that's great. That's as far left as you can be, and I agree with it. I'm just curious whether the closing on the high bars affected your decision to wait. You know, my intuition, Ouija, when this bar right here unfolded, told me 
that this was the cell area, okay? As I come down and price holds the median line, I actually, at this point, price is speeding up. I actually slowed down my decision making. No, there'd be nothing wrong with doing this, and probably 70% of the time I just put my order in. But as price actually respects the lower parallel, so the median line is working perfectly, and I see the close on the high, close on the high, close on the high. I'm in the area, but I don't put the order in. Then when I get the close on the low, I put the order in because this tells me it's high probability because we're back below the lower the median line we're back below sorry and we're closing on our low after three closes on our high that th we've likely seen our turn so it, as the price slows as price speeds up I slow down and I'm paying attention to the bars th look at this behavior close on the high close on the high close on the high through the median line now close on the low zooming right back through it okay now I'm ready to trade and it's in the same area yeah that I I would say yes to your question hey Kai how are you make sure you watch the tape there's more coming but okay all right so let's see what let's see what we get Amanda so as we run down we're looking for double I didn't draw the down slope median line. You can if it helps you. We slow down. Go a little bit horizontal. So at some point you have to have a profit stop here in case we fail to the downside. Right now you've got to have And that's 15 pips. I don't know if it is. I'm not going to bother. You got to protect yourself. I don't want to get stopped out of break even at this point. I want some money, right? Make sense? Okay. And there's double the range, Amanda. Thank you. Trailing stop has to be bigger than the ATR. Yes. It has to be at least the ATR. But also, John, I don't, you know, I mean, I I, I always like to give it a little bit of room, right? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm out of double the range as well, Amanda. All right, so let's see. I'm squeezed way in. It's, I, I would have more bars than this. I'd probably be trading something like about like this. So let me let me just get rid of double the range. I'll tell you what I'll do. And I'll just leave in the horizontal. So there's double the range. I'll leave that in. All right, so that's double the range. We're out. And let's see how price moves, all right? So let's pay attention and see if we can see we've seen basically the same behavior already three times, right? If we're smooth and rounded, we've seen the same behavior. Now, one of them didn't spawn a trade because it was just too quick a... There's just no way to get in. So don't get frustrated. You can't trade every swing. Is it range trading? I don't care if it is. I'll show you, Matt. I don't care if you're trading in a box. Of course, it's not going to work for me, is it? Oh, maybe it will. Nope. I don't know why those blow up. I don't care if you're trading in a box, which is range trading, or if you're trading like this and you can see the horizontals right I don't care you're, it's swing trading it's not how people that call themselves swing traders trade but it's swing trading you, you're just catching each or as my manager Tony from Perth Australia used to call it you're grabbing the squiggles and that's, of course, before there were the squiggles from Australia, those of you that have kids. You're just trading the squiggles, okay? 
And in the early 80s, I was a master at trading the squiggles. Oh, the, the wiggles. And, sorry. Yeah. But these are the squiggles. But the wiggles in Australia. Thank you, Amanda. Sorry about that. Did you watch the wiggles, Amanda? Those were like second grade teachers that decided to become... Oh, yeah, I did with my kids as well. Sure. So apparently it's just you and me. Okay, anyway. So let's not spend any more time on it. Oh, Peter remembers him. Okay. So we're, let's pay attention for the same behavior. There's nothing random about the markets. I feel like this market markets may be crystalline because the same type of spirals keep repeating. Okay, well, you know, if you do your... This is less than two days, okay? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm waving my hand. This is less than two days, all of this. So if you go back and do your homework before you start to trade, you might say, this looks rather crystal and the tops and bottoms look the same. Let me pay attention. Maybe I can grab the next one, right? I actually made these prior two trades, and now I'm looking for the next opportunity, right? Make sense? <coughs> So take a look. What do we have in front of us? We're at double the range. We've got a line of maximum excursion. We're below it. See it? Are, well, are we horizontal or was this horizontal? Is this horizontal? We don't know, but we might be scratching our heads saying, is this horizontal? All right, right? Every time it plays this game, Jesus says, not yet. All right, so maybe we'll start measuring the speed. Doesn't look horizontal anymore, does it? So we're not frustrated Instead, we just go, okay, well, it, it'll, go, it'll go horizontal. Looks like a cascade and a dump down. So at some point, look, we got our money. We got four stops, Amanda, right? And we got almost four on the other one. So we got eight, eight stops sitting in the bank. So we're just waiting for another opportunity, and we'll put a stop on that. We've got eight already. We'll put we we'll use one of our stops, but not now. And again, for those of you that are greedy, I don't care that it's gone lower. I got the easy money out, right? And, you know, if you wanted to just trail stops, you could still be short and trailing stops. You can play that game, and I often do. But we wanted double the range. We took our double the range. Okay, so we got a wide range bar that closes on its low. Investigate each bar. Can you see the little mini shelf here? And then a horizontal break through it. See it? it it's, not, it's not that it's tiny. It's actually, take a look at it, it's actually more than 40 pips. Sorry, more than 20 pips. This is parabolic, absolutely. This is actually vertical. The shelf is tiny. It stops, and then it goes 20 pips, right? See it? So are we accelerating? Sure. Absolutely. Right? The shorts... Okay, we didn't talk about this the prior two trades. What are the positions? Does it pay to be long now? You're either short or flat, right? Blatantly short. I like that, Ouija. Everyone understands that this is a trend down, right, Gino? For those of you that are still stuck in the talk about trend... The trend is down, right? And here's why I don't care about trend. No, don't say that, Pat. 
Here's why I don't care about trend. Because is that's so lagging. Because at this point, yeah, sure. My four-month-old dog knows it, it's a downtrend. But it's not going to do anything for me. The question is, where is an opportunity? And the opportunity is not knowing that at this point that it's a downward trend. Of course it's moving down. But is there an opportunity? So I see the small shelf. I see price expend a lot of energy in one bar. Does it follow through? No. We get a close on our high. We get a close on our high. We get a higher high. We're not closing on our high, but all right, so we get a small pullback. Does this look like horizontal to you? Hey, Mom. Uh, could be. Could Maybe not. Maybe it's slowing down a little bit. Maybe it's not. I don't know. It doesn't look like a change in behavior to me yet. But I'll watch it. So I throw the shelf out. I measure the speed, right? Which allows me to decide whether it's accelerating or decelerating. It is decelerating. I've got a few bars that made higher highs, but that's all I got, and it looks no different than this, really. Right? So I don't have enough yet for me to just hang a gono. Yeah, I'll grab my gono over here. I don't have enough to play this, do I? I mean, if I'm boom boom, maybe I decided that this is the ultimate bottom, but me, I don't, I don't have enough yet. Do you? Anybody want to buy it? I have no idea. I'm curious, but I was also curious here, and I was also curious here. Okay, so let's just put this up here just for chuckles. All right? So let's see what happens. So we want to know if we're going to come back. I'm going to steal this. A little bit different and now I is this enough of a higher low for you two things have happened here one is what a higher low something else has happened what is it first time a high has been taken out something else has happened okay well that's three things what's the other one what's the third Price is broadening, but what? Ma broke the maximum excursion. Right? And we're broadening. I just don't want to write anymore. All right, so I'm a little, now I'm a little more curious. Right? So some of the shorts are exactly right, Matt. Some of them are starting to, you know what? I got a lot of money in this. I mean, Amanda and I just said, just give us the easy money. Look, it almost, it's probably twice as much money as we took out. So there are people that have a lot of money in this. And as Ouija said, they're blatantly short. Some of them are starting to say, you know what? Hit, after seeing this run up, hit me with the profit stick. I can take my money here. And someone actually is even reaching for it. See that guy? It may not be more than one or two people. Is that enough to make you put an order in to buy? Look at the bars. No, no. Anybody else? I have some people that are interested, but not in getting long. All right, let's see. Now we've taken out the major maximum excursion line. 
and now we're pulling back. So we've taken out one high, now we're pulling back, okay? We obviously have been slowing down, right? Double bottoms, pull back through. Lower high, oops, break out to the downside. So we've broadened, no one took the bait, and it's not much, but we started to accelerate to the downside, and in fact with this bar, just as we did right here, take a look at this, and now vertical, we've got horizontal and now vertical, see it? So. I want you to remember this. I'm going to try and get an actual set of gears that I can show you for September. I think I have enough time to get it done. So often in a move, you'll be moving, then go horizontal. Then you'll either break up or break down, right? Horizontal does not mean that you're going to have a direction change. You can think of it just like a median line, you know, 43%, 43%. Because this is, remember, the 43% of the median line comes from 43% of the time it reverses, 43% of the time it goes down, or it accelerates, and the balance is sideways motion. So here we have the sideways motion, and now we've got the move continuing, right? So that was the congestion, which, you know, we discount when we're trading media lines, but it does happen. Okay, so price is accelerating. And again, if you are moving your stop, your profit stop, are the keys to continuing down the small change in acceleration off the tops of the bars? Well, they are in, in terms of following it, Bob. The question is, this may have been enough for you if you were very aggressive, this top being taken out to put your order in, and you would have, of course, spent one of your stops. It's, it's whether or not you decide that this is enough, along with taking out the tops, or I mean, what's, what is going to turn, what convinces you that the market's horizontal and it has turned? We just says the mar nature of this market seems to have changed from the prior two trades. It's no longer crystal. Okay. Well, I would say this, Ouija. If you thought the same, the swings were the same size, and we were just trading low to high, high to low, low to high, high to low, and we were in the same basic range, the answer is no, we're not. So be careful making those assumptions and instead pay attention to what price is doing, okay? Although you saw Amanda and I take profits at the prior low or double the range, you could also done prior low, etc. but it was off the, off the chart, so to speak. But Ouija says we're no longer working over the same territory. That's okay with me. I don't care. I'm, now, I don't have a position on it anymore, so now I'm back in hunt mode. So we leave a low. Close on its high. Hi, Tim. That profit stop bar is that size measured by one ATR? It's not, Robbie. I just went to 15 ticks, just above one ATR. Okay. <coughs> you could use one ATR if you want. <coughs> Excuse me. It needs to be at least one ATR. All right. So we leave a low, close on our high, mark it out again. So we're boxed in again. Let's see what this gives us. Can you see how we're really dependent on one, on each bar on the right side now? Um, we're no longer talking about this high. 
or this high or even this high we're now talking about each bar as it unfolds do you see that I'm going to drag you to each bar as it unfolds on the right, kicking and screaming if I have to. Okay? I will. Okay. Let's see what happens. And you can see now, again, slowing down again, basically mirror bars basically mirror bars kind of rangy do you see it did we do have lower tops so let's let's think about it in your mind you should be describing this and that I don't know what that was Pat looks like the cat ran across the key keyboard we've got lower tops but we started to go sideways in here you should be able should be able to feel that something tells me this line's going away yeah and it did darn it <clears throat> so the line is going sideways even though we have lower tops, right? This range looks like the prior range. Ish. So now I have three people that said it looks exactly like the prior range. What does that line tell me, Tim? Uh, okay, well, the only thing this, listen, Here's, here's what I make out of this, and nothing more than this. I've got a broadening action, as I did here. And I've got lower tops. That's all I have. Thinking what price might do to set up a move to the upside. It's not even a move to the upside, Gina, as much as it is I want to know. Okay, here we are again. Ready? We are moving down. We are moving down. We are decelerating though okay we went horizontal but then we accelerated again and now we're decelerating the question is somewhere here, are we going to go horizontal? And I will only care if we then start to turn up. Do you see that? Until the tangent changes, I don't care. Is that horizontal brown line meant as a visual clue to tell you what price is doing right now? Yeah, Ouija, here's... This line is for, it is only, listen, it, I could put it here. It means nothing except for one thing. I see price start starting to go what might be horizontal. It looks like it's broadening to me. The only other thing I know is that we have lower highs, okay? I don't know anything else. <clears throat> I don't know that we've gone horizontal. I don't know that the tangent has turned up. I don't even know that the tangent is horizontal. But I do have lower highs, and we do seem to be broadening, okay? Does that make sense? I'm not willing to say here that we're horizontal. Yes, no? Everybody else? You okay? I'm just investigating these bars. Now, I got a lot of horizontal here. It's about the same as this, I guess. <coughs> <coughs> Still got lower highs. And my line of maximum excursion is holding. Okay, here we go. What is... Uh, this is what I wrote to myself. Question. 
what's the current slope? Is it negative? Is it flat? Or is it positive? Can you answer that? There's a fourth choice, which is don't know. John says flat coil. Yuking says don't know. Ouija says don't know. Paul says flat. Amanda says negative. BJ says flat. 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 Tops differ from bottoms. Okay. Paul, wouldn't you say that that means you don't know? Flat looks flat. Flat. Okay. All right. The last price cluster is flat. Okay. So at this point, Taking out the LME is starting to go positive. So if we take out the LME, Amanda says, we'll be starting to go positive. So at this point, the most I can envision, yeah, it's, it is wedge-shaped, Robbie. The most I could possibly envision, the, the most I can envision is that it might be flat. Might be. But it might also be slightly negative because of the tops, right? The, but as far as I'm willing to go is that it might be horizontal but it certainly is not upsloping would you agree okay so it's like taking the temperature of a patient okay we no longer have lower highs See that? Now I'm willing to say that it looks like a range or a range implies horizontal, right? We're also broader than we were over here, right? And maybe we even have a higher low. Maybe, right? So Matt, I'll, I'll write that in for you. If it's a higher low, it's not a very really spectacular higher low, but maybe that's what we get, right? So maybe, uh, and I'll even give you a different color. So Matt says maybe we got a higher low here. All right? But I'm still not sure. I'm pretty sure that we've gone horizontal, but I'm still not sure that we've rounded to upsloping. Make sense? Maybe we have. No one's willing to go long here. Maybe when you see this one, Matt, maybe you're willing to put an order in here. Matt says, not me. Okay. Okay, heading back lower, retesting the prior low, double bottoms at the prior low. Aaron says I'm willing to go long right now. Okay. Your long would look like that, Aaron. Okay, we actually take out Matt's high or low. So that idea, well, we'll leave it. We'll leave the word in anyway. Okay, we take it out. Okay. Ignore the orange if you can. I'm now wondering if this is a range. Is it significant that this horizontal range is wider than the previous one? Yeah, sure. Anytime we broaden out, because it no longer looks like a cascade lower, right? All right, if we can imagine a range, I don't think it's predictive, I agree. If we can imagine a range, what's the most likely behavior if we break out of a range? Double the range. 
Well, that would be going par 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 parabolic, wouldn't it, David? I wish I could say it. Right? Okay, so I, I just put this up here to remind me. And if we did this, we'd be taking out this high and this high and probably this high, right? So let's say that you're not convinced. Aaron wants to get long. Let's say that you're not convinced. So we got Aaron's long. Better than three to one. No, I'm just gonna Petra. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna let you guys. You've seen three of them. I'm gonna let you guys call the shots here now. I'll show you. I'll show you where I. I'll show you opportunities. Okay. Is there a reason you think it will go long? Here's what I think. I, I've written down exactly what I think. What's the current slope? Negative, flat, positive. My answer was not sure. But once this happened and we took out these highs, my answer is, okay, now it looks like we are horizontal. Petra, I'm unwilling to go long yet, okay? Because this one fooled me as well. Make sense, Petra? Okay, what are the current positions? It's a good question, Amanda. What do you think people that are short from above We got lots of money in this. They're short or flat. Do you think people are going long at this point? Nah, I don't think so. But there's probably people starting to take some profits, which is why it has gone a little bit horizontal, right? Short and edgy. As it goes further and further in a range, yes, they do get edgy. You want your money, right? Either, Amer especially Americans, either move or get me out. I think a poke below will come. It has that feel, says Amanda. Okay. I'm not much of a predictor anymore, but okay. I just doubled the range because it's the most like behavior. It's not that I even think it's going up here. I'm just, I'm drawing for the sake of drawing, okay? It's a, okay, if this is horizontal and it goes parabolic, where is it likely to go? Get it? I'm tempted to get long after seeing the outside bar up. Okay, we'll go. We'll put your order in. You can't even be getting long a tick better. Okay. Didn't get filled. Sorry. Mirror bars closing on the high. And another high. And another high. And ooh. You king, one bar too late. Okay, let me ask you all a question. Doesn't it feel like it's over? Matt just wrote, too late now, but I like that. Okay, we haven't even taken out the range. We're still in the range. Right? We haven't done anything. Slow down. The market's speeding up. You should. It does look like fresh buyers. Yes, it does, Ouija. But I'm not going to chase it, am I? So, if you don't have your order in at this point, orient yourself. Remember, Uda? Orient yourself. Um, okay. It looks perky, but it's still in the range. So, Amanda says she's got her order in. You like you like this order, Amanda? Where, where, where do you want your order? Yes, Robbie, I do have a bias, but I'd really I'd like to, to take this top out as well. But yeah, um, I'll show you what I do, Amanda. I want to know what you want to do. Well, if you're not if you if you don't know where to put your order, then stay out. I'm at forty-two fifteen. Uh, I think I like that. Look at all the bottoms in here. Look at all the activity right in here. John. John's right. I like that area. How about everybody else? Anyway, that's one area. Okay, so let's just follow price. Okay. 
if you got your order sitting here, is it over? Crap. F feels terrible, doesn't it? Do you think it's fair to say that the slope has now turned positive? You're not in, Amanda. You didn't get filled. The slope has turned positive. Only one of us is long. It's likely... Yes, but you're not long, Amanda. Yo, he would probably be a B. I don't know. Um, who got long? Raise your hand. I forget. I'm old. There you go. Aaron, are you at break even? Or not? Not yet. There's... There's two to one. Aaron, this is worth eighty percent of the pro of the target, so he's going to break even. Okay, my problem with getting long early, I now have to go to break even or soon do, and then get. Okay, listen to what Matt says. My problem with getting long early, I now have to go to break even or soon do, and then get taken out when price comes back into a pivot trade later. Okay, cool. So, Aaron's going in to break even. We're gonna listen. So this is Aaron right here. All right, and now he's a break even. So Matt, let's keep that in mind. Matt says every time I trade to the left, every time Tim pushes me to the left, I go to break even and I get stopped out of break even, and then the damn thing moves in my direction. Right? Is that correct, Matt? Okay. So, we come up and zoom this range, and we retest this. So, I write down, actually, when this bar comes, fine, when this bar happens, the slope is no longer negative. Would you agree? In fact, the slope is po actually positive. We zoom. Now we retest. See it? Can you feel the shift in mass here? Do you remember this from the first trade? Nobody remembers it? Everybody remembers it? It's like cha-cha-cha, right? It's like the fulcrum, yeah. Okay. We've now doubled the range. Aaron, just so you know, you were risking 250 you've now got 820 bucks in the bank. You can take your money at double the range, or you can play for the big prize. It depends on... You, you, okay, Aaron says, give me my money. Okay, smart boy. We expect it. to And crazy wide bars, too, says Ouija. Sure. Not only up, but also down, right? All right, so I like the fulcrum. Trade over. Amanda says, looks like it. Oh, should I pull your order, Amanda? I'm going to take uh, Aaron. There's his entry. We'll leave him here for posterity. Amanda, you still a buyer down there? Or you, no, leave me out. I don't know where my order is. I can't see an entry yet. Okay, so Amanda doesn't see an opportunity anymore. We'll leave her out. Okay, take a look. This is 
the old prior range you can see price zoom it retest it and then make a new high as price comes down do I want to buy a retest <clears throat> I'm actually asking myself do I want to get long here take a look then answer you guys getting tired already come on no middle of the range says Lewis I don't think you have a stop says Robbie BJ says not with my money Matt says, I don't think the buyers have moved up yet. I think they're still waiting for it to retrace. Okay. There's, we're not below structure. It looks like it's a very risky and there's no stop. Don't know why, but those wide range buyers make me cautious. Well, they should. And there is no stop, Todd. You're right. So do I want to be long here? The answer absolutely is no. No, thank you. I know it's moving up, but I'm going to have to pass on this one for two reasons. A, no stop, and B, it's crazy town. I want normal volatility, right? And I, I also, I, this is the middle. I don't want to trade in the middle. I want to trade on the edges. Now, that means I might miss an opportunity, but that's okay because I don't think this is a good opportunity. So if it goes up for me, I'm going to use this later. It's basically double the range. Okay. So we start to eat in. I don't want to be long here. There's no stop. I don't see anything I like here. Closes on its low, closes on its low, closes on its low. Make anybody else interested? No one's talking. You guys asleep? Come on. We are in the middle of the original range. That's good. Interested but not ready to commit. Starting to think it might come back into a long zone. Okay. Not yet. Counting my money. His speed. Okay. Waiting. Yeah, we still have eight stops in our pocket. I would stay out. I want normal volatility, says Ouija. Okay. Again, another close on the low. We actually made a new low. How about that? The mountain just got filled, didn't it? Now the volatility is starting to get back to the normal size. We're back in filling the mountain territory. People got long and also took their profits on their shorts at this point, right? Some people actually got long here. How'd that work for them? Not real good. Whether you got long here on the breakout, or here when you chased, or here when you chased, or even if you bought the retrace, there's no stop, right? So what happens? They end up throwing up. That's why we didn't want to trade here even though this seems like the fulcrum, right? Make sense? If the low of the next bar is higher, I will get long. Now it looks interesting. It looks horrible if you were long and didn't get out, right? So, do you think anybody's long at this point? And in fact, even a lot of the shorts are probably gone at this point because of the volatility, right? It's a bit of bloodbath. So the books are clearing up. Exactly right. We did just what I was going to say. And that's when I love to trade. Pain and the books are clear. So here's the mountain fill right here. See it? Yeah. If you played here, you got hurt. You like that bar. Okay. Let's see what we get. The closes are higher. The closes are higher. Okay, this is what I decide. Take a look at all these bars. This look familiar to you there, Aaron? Go look at all these bars in here. All in the same area. Okay, we filled the mountain. Now, this is like a building. It's structure. It's literally, physically structure. We filled the mountain. 
okay I can't buy on this bar because that is us filling the structure but when the stru once the structure is filled and all painted in now everybody can see the double bottoms and they'll put buy orders down here do you follow me they're not going to until we get down here but once we get down here everybody can draw that flat trend line right everybody sees the multiple lows and goes oh I got triple bottoms or whatever so there are buy orders down here there will be stops below them but that's why we're going to use a measure of volatility so because this structure has been filled and literally you've seen me draw it in and use crayon drawings and fill it all in once structure is filled we can use the bottom for stops that's right you know can I say that it is a failure for price to break to the downside is that massive sell-off failed to follow through yes you can say that this thing came down here look it was just screaming down and then what happened soft landing I mean I would expect when this was coming down let me put this over here now I would expect that this would now double the range to the downside what do you what do you think about that thought it's coming down so hard I would expect it to double that range to the downside but instead it almost has a parachute like landing comes down hits the bottom and just stops and then turns on a dime there's my scary move it didn't come in one bar it came in a swing okay yeah that's an ugly swing isn't it so Ouija says it's telling me the quality of the low yeah I like that so this is a failure of sorts the moment I see all these bars with higher closes and I see that the acceleration of the downside led to nothing it is a failure and I can use this mountain structure that everybody else can draw the trend line and say okay I'm gonna buy the triple bottoms there's gonna be buy orders here I can get long up here if I'm willing to spend one stop and that's got to be the key are you willing to spend a stop because there are going to be times there are going to be buyers down here that's for sure but there are also going to be stop loss sellers below some and that's why you have some amount of volatility that's why your gonna go hangs down here sometimes your gonna go will not survive but if you're willing to risk one stop and I'm using twice the ATR I'm willing to get long against look at against all these lows can you see it make sense okay if I'm willing to get long I need to have a profit target what do you think I can use sure why not double the range to the upside why not right double the mountain makes perfect sense okay don't make it too hard it doesn't have to especially when you're intraday swing trading like that like this is don't make it too hard you're not trying to catch the top and the bottom you're trying to take out about 70 percent of the range if you, if you can do that you'll be in pig heaven okay would the prior high be the first problem area it will be the first problem area and I'm gonna risk 250 to the first problem area it's gonna be 800 bucks Robbie okay if you want Robbie let me just I'll give you permission you ready if you want take your 800 bucks and walk actually we you and I talked about this in mentoring there is the prior swing see it if you want take your money take your 750 your three to one right here and walk away if it goes parabolic take the easy money and walk away if you're in the let me get used to taking profits on a regular basis take the three point 
four to one or whatever that this gives you right here and walk away okay everybody with me some of you need that not not everybody does but some of you absolutely need that I'll leave that for you Robbie okay so I can now use this as structure you can see where I'm willing to buy are there any questions before I go forward this is our third trade in oil and it's only in a, it's a little bit more than a day that's all so see my orders just wait just wait it's okay I can wait I got all day I got I got eight stops in my pocket hell Aaron's already got uh, 11 right 12 I got all day it's okay with me I'm good price fluctuates I'm still good okay now we measure the velocity because we Close on our open our high, close on our low. Okay. It, this might scare some of you, but remember, I need a pullback to get long. Orders are still in. Just patient. Just be impatient. Filled. Anybody nervous? Closes on its low. Left the lower high. You could go top shoulder. Okay, Matt Cubed is, is nervous. Anybody else cure, uh, nervous? Okay, so I've got a few. I've got one no, and I've got quite a few I would be, or yes. And I've got one, Peter says, no, I believe in my work. And Aaron says, nah, you know what? Aaron, Aaron says, I got 11 stops. I, can't can't touch me now that's see that's the beauty and Pat says I got one stop that is the beauty of thinking about this in terms of stops you know what I just built up eight stops I'm only losing if worse that happens to me is I only have seven left you see how this works there comes a time in a month if you do this correctly where you can't have a losing month Because you set up rules that say, I'm only going to lose, I'll only take X amount of losers in a day. I'll only have X amount of losers in a week. I'll only give back X amount of profits. But you get to the point where you have, like Aaron has, let's say 13, 14 stops in his pocket. He can't have a losing month. It's not possible. Because he's put wheels around, you know, training wheels around himself. He's put rails to help him. Make sense? At this point, he's assured himself a winning month. How's that feel, Aaron? You can do no wrong. Yeah. And it's not that hard to get in the position of that if you think that way. The problem is most of you are thinking trade to trade, and the only thing you're thinking about is, oh, crap, i got to make money. Oh, crap, this is turning into a loser. You know, instead of that... Stop thinking about money and start thinking about stops. Okay? And it becomes a series of probabilities. All right. So we're long. Quite a few people are worried. We get a head sander. Then we get one right, right back at you. So there's a fight down here. But we've been down here before, and the reason we chose this area is because it tends to cluster opens and closes right and lows and highs it's a multi pivot line it's a it's a price attractor so you had one two three four bars to get filled all right when this happens I wonder and it's just a thought at this point I can't say fact but is this a higher low now, right? It's been tested, 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 tested. This bar pops. Is this the higher low? Everybody with me? Oh, 
coming right back at me. Now it feels like a higher low, doesn't it? Taking out the line of maximum excursion feels like a higher low. More excel. Now I've got fresh buyers. Can you, can you see the fresh buyers come in now? I don't want to be these buyers. I want to be this buyer. See it? Before I forget, let me, I don't want to squeeze in to squeeze in, but I want to show you something. You ready? You remember, Matt, remember what you told me? You go to, you get trade too early, then you go to break even, then you get stopped out. Remember Aaron's trade? Watch this. Aaron, ready? Aaron, you got long here. You took your profits at double the range, right? You went to break even, then you took a. If you had, if you just stayed at break even, what would have happened? Aloha. So, when you get the easy money like that, look at it's parabolic. This is what I, the homework that I gave you. I guess it was, was it last Monday? I guess it was last Monday. See the parabolic move. take the money okay okay take the money from the first move and then you can get in again if you can see it again you can absolutely if you're still long of course you can do nothing but sit there and hope you don't get stopped out okay we accelerate then we start to pull back again we make it all the way to the line of maximum excursion this is why we have to be careful about when we move to break even, right? But this may be, for some people, secondary entry underneath this low. If you if you got to buy late, buy here. God, don't buy up here. Right? But this is about as far to the right as it's going to work normally. You often will get a second chance, but make sure that it's relatively close to the bone. All right. Start to accelerate. I want those double tops taken out, and I get them. You with me? Now we're at the upsloping line of maximum excursion. We pull back. You know, I don't know where this is, so I'm sure I marked it, but just to make sure I didn't. There it is. I did mark it. There'll, there'll be something over here. Double the range. See it? Man says I got to be at break even. I think the moment you take out certainly this high, if not, let me check. I wouldn't go to break even here, but I would here. But that's me. And now you can be underneath here if you want. Not that it's going to make much of a difference, but it'll be profitable. Okay. Uh, I'll stay squeezed in here so we can see double the top. And we're out at double the range. Okay. These are, you know, basically they're no brainers. So that's two thousand bucks in three hours. Two thousand dollars a contract, three hours. So that one is ten. So Aaron ended up with twenty. He's up twenty-three stops for the month right now. Aaron, I think your your month is safe, don't you think? So in two days of trading, you're up 23 stops. You 
can't have a losing month now. Period. You, just, you can't let yourself. Where does it go? Now, I did something else. Here's how I took my profit. Double the range, but I did it. What I did was I grabbed this line of maximum excursion. See it? Put it on top and then put it on top here. I mean, it's not much difference. It's 44.10 versus 44.47. It's an extra... 35 pips. It's not the end. Of, it's it's not, it's not going to make or break the trade. So I actually got about 2100 bucks out of it. But it would be cool to grab even more, but it doesn't make that one's easy to do. Look where it goes. It keeps right on. But you got to remember to take your money. Because look what happens otherwise. If you hadn't taken your money here, or I don't know how, how you would have, this is this with that small range on top, but that doesn't make any logical sense. You would have been profit stopped out and would have got out around here. Still would have made nice money, but you're much better off selling as it goes up, right? The rolling shop sets up the down move, yep. This is maybe your cue that if you haven't taken your profit to find your way out, right? So let's, that's what we just traded. And I would venture to say that it was unlikely you would catch this parabolic down move. And hopefully it didn't catch you. Okay. Nice sequence. You haven't shown this type of series before. Well, we're we're going somewhere, Matt. That was a vicious time move, yes. We are going somewhere, folks. And I want to emphasize one thing, then I'll let you go. spell but you can't have a losing month I want you to think about this this is why if you go on the market geometry page if you haven't filled out and those are your mentor of course you have but if you go on the mar uh, market geometry page and go to the free info and download the managing yourself sheet and your trade plan and your limits and fill all this out And understand why it's important that you never take more than two losing trades in a day or three in a row or X amount in a week, X amount in a month. Because if you get up 13, 14 stops after a run like this, you, it's not possible to have a losing month. This is very much the way I used to trade on the floor for the first time in the screen. Well, Peter, we can trade the same way on the floor, but we just have to take the cues. I actually tape read much like you did on the floor but I do it from visual cues. Okay? So uh, my job as your teacher as your mentor is to get you to understand what the cues look like on a screen instead of what they smell like, sound like, and look like when you're standing around with other traders. Right? By the way, I've noticed You've been leaning on the 189 bar tick charts. What made you jump to 777? Oh, Pete, on oil, 189 ticks would kill you. It's so fast. It's just too, it's too fast. You have to take, it, uh, take account. For example, in gold, I trade 888. If you tried to trade 189, you won't get these types of swings. You'll be trading these minuscule swings. 
पांच I mean, you can make money, but this, you know, look, 47 to, these are 30 pips. I don't want to trade for 30 pips. I want some meat, as they say. Does that make sense, Pete? No, natural gas has a different volatility than oil. Natural gas is easily traded at 189, Pete. Soy meal is traded at 189 or even 89. Does trading in the pit make people more impulsive? Absolutely, David. It's a lot harder for me to teach Peter to, dr to drop the impulsiveness because he's been... Guys that stay in the pit, as, as one of my earlier mentors who was a pit trader used to tell me, volume 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 meaning trade 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 okay but we don't have low transaction costs and high liquidity we don't have the same things that they have it's easy for a pit trader in, in the old days not any longer it's easy it was easy for a pit trader to be in feel the move get out even if it's a small loss and move on to the next trade okay those are impulsive trades. I constantly had someone asking for a market 100 times an hour. Yeah, sure. David must have been a pit trader in his past life. Yeah, maybe. So, uh, no, something like pit traders is a market maker at an institution like J.P. Morgan, which I was for a while. It was a great opportunity for me. Why? Because it made me think. I mean, at one point, as I said, I, I was averaging 750 trades a day because people were asking me for markets all day long okay so it really helps your decision making process the problem is though if you want to slow down and actually remember you're trading with somebody else's money at that point if you want to slow down and be consistently profitable especially on a screen the impulse portion of that has to go away Because I'll just ask you straight up, Pete. How's it, now that you're not in the pits, how's, it, how's that going? It's hard, isn't it? You know, the CME hired me in 2003. Pete says it's impossible. Well, it's not impossible, and I'll prove it to you, Pete, because I will, I will make... I will make the transition. I will stand with you and make the, make the transition for you. It, it is possible. 99.9% .9 of my boys are dead. Yeah. And the reason why is because they're, they're not getting the kind of help that you are. They need to go through this. It is cathartic. It's very difficult. But you can do it. In 2003, the CME gave me a whole floor of the CME and 3,500 traders that had had average experience of over 20 years trading which is a good thing and a bad thing. It's, it's difficult because it's hard to break those habits and get them onto the screen. But once you get them onto the screen and get them to understand that they have to slow down and find their cues in the visual sense, not in the, I hear it, I smell it, I see it, I intuitively, the impulse has to go away. Once you get the impulse gone, they're able to use the skills that they had before. They just don't realize it. First, you have to beat them up. Then you can give them the skills back. So, But you're not taking credit for your unbelievable tactical ability. Okay. I'll, I agree. Peter, I, I will say, I know you never had that. Well, you've never had to develop that. The technicals, yeah, I get that. But we will develop that w for you, okay? The one thing that I won't teach or I won't show here I do my best not to show you what I consider to be trades that are talent trades. I can't teach talent. That doesn't mean that you don't have more talent than me. Maybe you do. But I can't teach it. No matter what your talent level is, I can't increase your talent. I can only help you trade better. Okay? All of you.
So that's my job here as your mentor is to give you tools and then most importantly help you master yourself. And as BJ and Pat said last week, when they first came here, what, four years ago or so? They used to go, what the hell are you talking about? I, I hate it when you say that, master yourself. That doesn't make any sense. Well, now they get it. That's the hardest thing. Six years, BJ and Pat have been here. David said, well, David, David, you're a youngster. David says, still working on it. Come on, you're a youngster. 14 months. Well, 14 months is a youngster. Peter says, awesome job today, and how in God's name can you answer everyone in this class like you do? Because I love to teach, Peter. Um, I'm taking a sabbatical from Stanford and MIT right now. I'm going, I may go back next year, but I love to teach. I have a blast doing this. I have more fun doing this than making the trades. I mean, I love making money, don't get me wrong. But I love it when you guys get it. When, I have, when the light comes on for somebody, I love it. Started the up-down calculations this weekend. I'm a believer now. Good, Jorge. All right, so I hope everybody learned something good today. I had fun. And um, at some point, I'll actually follow through and send everybody an email about September in Chicago. I'm still tracking it. I'm just about done, but we'll get there. And... Um, I will probably see you somewhere during the week in market maps, and then certainly I'll see you on Friday morning, okay? And hopefully, yeah, some people like this session. Hopefully you like the series of trades. Homework, make money. No, homework, you know what? I, I still want you to think about this. Opportunity, or is, uh, parabolic. Opportunity, parabolic. Because I, from the majority of you, this is going to be your signature trade. I'm going to tell you right now. Okay? Opportunity. And it doesn't matter how much of the parabolic you trade. You don't have to carry that. You don't have to get this much. You just have to get opportunity somewhere. Okay? Just saw one today. Good. Very good. OPK. I'm going to add it right now. I'll look, I'll look at it later. Got to go to the doctors when I'm done here. Okay. All right, guys. 13 minutes. Everybody, have a wonderful day. I hope you had a great Monday. I, I thought it was Friday when I started talking this morning. Have a great week, and uh, I'll see you later on in the week. Expect an email from me somewhere coming up soon, and I'll talk to you all soon. Take care, guys.